I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with the cattle market summary for the week ending June the 28th, brought to you in part by the International Brangus Breeders Association. Have you checked into the versatility and the heat resistance offered by Brangus cattle? Visit gobrangus.com for more information. First thing I want to say is I want to keep you guys up to date with what's going on that I hear about and when somebody's uh, having trouble it's big within the industry and we need to send prayers out. I want to do that because I do believe they help. Gene Barber of Bluegrass Stockyards and of Eugene Barber and Sons Order Buying had a horrible head-on accident over the weekend and he's in pretty bad shape and suffering, uh, having some surgeries, uh, going to have some, some long-lasting uh, recovery and, and uh, he's got some age on him as you guys know that know him but major figure within the industry uh, and uh, I want you guys to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Let's get on with the report now. Uh, the big question uh, after Friday is what flood? Uh, remember when we were talking just a, a few months ago about how horrible this flood was and it was coming through and it was ravaging so much of our, our, our uh, farm ground and guys weren't able to get their crops put in and uh, a lot of ground was not even going to be able to be planted because it's standing in water and all that. I guess USDA forgot about that or uh, it did not figure into their uh, projections on the acreage report that came out on Friday because unbelievably the USDA projected 91.7 million planted acres of corn that compares to 89.1 million acres planted last year at this time so 2.6 million more than last year your expectations were for 3 million less because we had lost so many acres uh, due to the flood waters and and everything that went with. It's just hard to believe it was a big eye-opener. It did lend some support to your feeder cattle on Friday because it come out uh, midday there before the board closed and it tanked your, your corn futures of course but uh, it was just such a surprising thing and, and everybody was talking about it and and if you on social media I'm sure you saw plenty of memes and and different jokes about it but it's just unbelievable look at the soybean acres uh, they projected them uh, to fall by nine million planted acres now they're wanting to do a redo since uh, they normally do that uh, their their testing or or, or uh, take their inventory of those planted acres in the first part of June while well, there was still so much flooding going on that a lot of places uh, you couldn't really tell what was going on some of them were still trying to get planted different things like that. Well, that should have give you an idea that there wasn't going to be as many planted acres, but just the opposite happened. But then, uh, so now they're wanting to come back in and do it in the first part of July, which is right away, which they, they normally don't do. And, and uh, so I guess we'll see what happens with the redo. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't really trust. I work for USDA long enough to I don't really trust uh, any of those reports. I tell you what, uh, uh, there's a difference between being right and being official. And I guarantee you uh, so much of that stuff is estimated. Uh, you know, um, whether they whether they do flyovers, whether they drive around and look, whether they uh, look at those questionnaires that, that we know all of us fill out with a sharp pencil. I, I know uh, how much of that goes on, but it's just, you know, the only one of those reports that I really, really have faith in is your uh, daily estimated slaughter because I guarantee you they run those packing plants with a tight ship and they know exactly how many head were slaughtered each day and they get that filled out right but you look about uh, what happened last week uh, we come in early last week and we started talking about how China had blocked all uh, shipments of meat from Canada uh, that, that uh, shook the market up quite a bit uh, actually your, your board was up good on the cattle all week and I think part of that had to do with that although some people were saying well if Canada's not being able to send meat to China then there's going to be more meat on the market here in North America and they're going to be wanting to send more of that to us but I think most of us most of the industry looked at it as that's one less place that China's going to be getting 
protein meat and uh, and they're running out of places to get it and with that African swine fever that they've had and all the problems they've had getting some protein in there for their uh, scores of people that are that are really needing some protein uh, we're hoping that maybe we'll get to send them more of ours and uh, Trump keeps meeting with those leaders over there all the time and and something's gonna break loose uh, I really feel like that and uh, so that was a big push early in the week. Uh, we also heard middle of the week that uh, that uh, USDA, they put out a lot of stuff and it impacts the market a whole lot. And I wish they wouldn't wait to send that stuff out. You know, I hate it whenever they unveil information all at once and then everybody just holds on for the jolt what it's going to do to the market. If they would release that information as it comes in uh, in, in a more of a real-time atmosphere it would be a better deal but uh, USDA did uh, report that they will allow silage corn to be planted for a cover crop and some of those uh, lost acres that they weren't able to uh, to get planted but evidently there's not many of those because Friday they come out and said that, that uh, we got so many million acres planted that the reports just don't jive but a lot of people thought that that silage corn being able to be planted for a cover crop would uh, would be able to be uh, uh, cut into silage and make a lot of cheap feed for cattle. Uh, I did have a gentleman that called me and left me a nice message there, and I want to thank him. Uh, and and I, I appreciate all the information I get. That's the only way that I can share it is when you guys uh, share with me your cattle sales, what's going on around the industry. I've got a lot of contacts around that I talk to every week, but uh, but uh, anytime I can find out some new information that I don't know. But uh, this gentleman explained to me that it is mandated in that uh, that cover crop that, uh, that the USDA said you could plant silage corn. The hell of it is you got to plant it so thick that it's not going to make an ear. So there won't be much grain in it at all. And I know that uh, doesn't go along with what we talked about middle of the week, but I didn't realize that. But you got to plant it uh, so narrow and so thick that it's it's not going to make any grain uh, to help the feed. Now it could make a lot of roughage, and that helps too. But you can you can sure cut that and add some grain to it and uh, and uh, make some some feed out of it. But he also said if it doesn't continue to to stay wet around that, then it won't hardly do anything. But it will hold the ground together, and that's really what they're looking for. But Let's look at the board for the week on cattle. June live cattle futures. Monday was up 37 cents. Tuesday was up 82 cents. Wednesday up a dollar and a quarter. Thursday up a dollar 57. Friday down just seven cents. Can you remember a week that we had that good of uh, uh, trends in your live cattle spot market? Ended up with June live cattle ending the week at 110.50, and they're right at mature level right now. So. That's uh, that's where we ended up, and and that's about a uh, uh, buck or so more than what the what the your cash market ended up. But your June live cattle closed up three ninety five, three dollars and ninety five cents for the week. Now August one hundred four thirty five was the the end of the week quote for August uh, live cattle. That was up two dollars and thirteen cents. Now we had such a great week on the board. And we had mixed fat cattle trade. We didn't gain any ground on the fat cattle trade. So I don't know what it would take to, to get that deal propped back up. August feeder cattle. Monday was down a buck ninety. Tuesday down forty five cents. Wednesday is when we saw the big turnaround and up the limit, up the four dollar and fifty cent limit. And as you went on out uh, into the future, they were up big too. But uh, your August was the only one that was actually uh, locked up the limit at close. Thursday was down just two cents, and Friday back up a dollar five. Most of it due to that uh, acreage report that came out on Friday. But August feeder cattle ended the week at one thirty six eighty five. That was up three dollars and eighteen cents for the week. September closed at one thirty six seventy, up two dollars and sixty five cents for the week. Your fat cattle trade. Uh, we we ended up uh, waiting until because uh, when we had a positive board all week. Well, then your, your packers get nervous that uh, guys are maybe going to want more money and they're gonna, they have to really dig in, play a lot of psychological games with them to keep the board or, or keep the cash market under pressure. 
and they ended up doing that. So uh, ended up trading cattle on Friday at a dollar nine. And if you're asking me if that was better or worse than the previous week, the answer is yes. But your your Southern Plains uh, traded at a dollar nine. Texas and Kansas both traded there. Now was that higher or lower? That was a buck lower than the bulk of the previous week's trade. If you remember, happened early in the week at a dollar ten. But late last week, we did see some guys pulling the trigger on some cattle at 108 and and it was more than just a load or two it was enough to really make us feel like we were going to have a 108 dollar market this past week so it would be a buck better than that late market but nebraska and iowa sold uh, live sales from 109 all the way up to 112 112 and a quarter right in there but not a lot of live sales that would be also kind of mixed uh, the bulk of their trade was dressed from 178 to 180 and uh, and that's really two dollars higher to one dollar lower uh, you know we then than late last week but it may be uh, more better than that uh, or just a, a, a difficult trend to call because it just depends on when you want to say that the bulk of the trade happened uh, we were mostly at 180 but then, but then it fell back to 176 to 178. Now we're at 178 to 180, mostly 180. So just kind of hanging right in there, unevenly steady uh, would be the best way to call it, I would say. But only 10,700 head had sold through Thursday. Now we don't know how heavy the sales were on Friday, but I'm thinking it's going to be kind of a disappointing volume because uh, we just didn't see uh, a lot of the guys were passing on that. They were kind of like what I was thinking. They were thinking, you know, with uh, the, the reports kind of being down for grain, even though it's fat cattle, it does lend some support. And uh, your board's been up uh, pretty good on everything, on cattle anyway, for, for the whole week. And they were thinking, you know, I'm thinking we should get more than that. And so a lot of, of, of the feedlots passed. And your packers were buying for a short holiday week. They didn't really need the cattle that bad. So they're figuring they can get the board under pressure during the holiday week and go back to buying them cheaper every week as we move on through the dog days of summer. But box beef cutout values, your average trade for last week was 219.55 on choice cuts. That was down $1.35 compared to the uh, average of the previous week. Your select cuts, 197.96 down three dollars and fifty six cents from the average of the previous week there got a big choice select spread of twenty one dollars and fifty nine cents and a pretty decent movement of six hundred and eighty seven loads of cuts grinds and trimmings your slaughter pretty big one of your bigger ones for the week uh, of course leading into a holiday week you would kind of expect that but it's bigger in comparison to a year ago and, and last week, but 665,000 for the week last week, that's pretty darn healthy. That's 3,000 more than the previous week and 16,000 more than the same week a year ago. We are now up 1.2% year to date on cattle slaughter, but look at the rest of the red meat. Your hogs up 3.2%. Uh, sheep and lambs up 3.1 percent and even calves or, or veal up four percent so uh, making a lot of protein out there okay let's talk about your feeder cattle markets uh, your real-time index on cattle on cattle market central uh, ended the week at 134.16 that was up almost three dollars compared to the end of the previous week up two dollars and 99 cents and uh, and just like that in your sales your feeder cattle auctions, uh, your big sales through the week were all higher, pretty much two to four dollars higher. So that goes exactly along with your real time index, which was up right at three dollars higher. So uh, that's that's a good test of that. Mostly just on yearlings, and and we did see some sales up in the northern plains this week, uh, like we did in the previous week. We had sales all through the middle parts of the country, which was a good test of the market, and sure enough, higher. Uh, despite it being very hot around, guys were still wanting to buy cattle. And uh, it just, uh, the your technical indicators look like we've just about got to the point where we're going to kind of start turning things around uh, on the board. And, and uh, guys are wanting to get in on some cattle. They haven't done all that well lately. 
your backgrounders are the ones that have really had a hard time making cattle break even and as we get into the middle part of July and, and here right around 4th of July too we've got a lot of big uh, videos that's going to be happening. Uh, I'm here at Downstream Casino in Quapaw, Oklahoma right now going to be uh, kind of promoting this uh, big uh, primetime livestock video that they're having on Tuesday here at uh, here at Quapaw. Uh, that's associated with Joplin Regional Stockyards. We've got a lot of big videos. They're going to be pricing a lot of cattle on there. Your feedlots really want those cattle and uh, and with the guys not making any money on the cattle this year and, and not being used to that and, and they're going to be kind of hard to trade with. A lot of them are saying they might want to feed the cattle themselves. That's the last thing these feedlots want to happen because then the guys will find out how well they feed. It'll be that much harder to buy in the future. So uh, we're going to push the market on these feeder cattle here over the next, over this holiday week, the few sales that they'll have, brick and mortar sales. But then as we get into the big videos that happen uh, the first half of July and these double stock cattle coming off of your Flint Hills and Osage, uh, there's no better demand uh, for, for feeder cattle than it is on those green yearlings coming off of those pastures. But let's talk about some of your uh, late week markets there. If you remember, Joplin uh, Regional Stockyards had a big wean back special on Thursday after that big sale that they had on Monday. Had another 6,000 head plus on that wean back special on Thursday. Going to have a pretty good size sale here Monday, about 5,000 head. Probably stop in out there since I'm in the neighborhood. And then come back on Tuesday with 50,000 head for the primetime livestock video. It's unbelievable how many cattle they market uh, through the Joplin Regional Stockyards method there. But Thursday at the Weanback Special, Mark Harmon sold these home-raised yearlings uh, of his, and uh, the steer package weighed 720 pounds at 155.50. Pretty impressive right there. But uh, on Saturday, the latest markets we have uh, on a commodity market right here, uh, close to the Midwest uh, on the southern side. Fort Scott, Kansas had a good sale on Saturday, and they sold 125 head of 886-pound steers, nearly 900 pounds, at 134.35. That's a look at your week's markets. Uh, like I said, from Downstream Casino here for the Big Bang uh, Primetime Livestock video on Tuesday. Uh, I'll talk to you next week.